And their faces, the two cherubs, uh, faced one, uh, its brother, literally, one to the other. Their faces were facing directly one against the, the other. However, they faced one another, but their heads were slightly downwards, so that even though they were facing one another, they were looking somewhat downwards towards the capoeiras. Uh, so the question that occurs to the intelligent reader on a simple uh, plane is uh, we all know that Yiddishkeit is tremendously uh, careful about any form of other image or any Indian klaru or klaru would suggest any image going to get to the deity or things, anything connected with the other of the Ebushta. And Hashem Echad is a Klal Otsum, and it's the basis of all Yiddishkeit. And here we see Mamish in the Oran, uh, in the Oran, on the Oran Kodesh, and in the Kodesh HaKadoshim, we see these two um, shapes, yeah, two forms in the forms of uh, uh, cherubs. We'll soon have to go into what does it mean, a, a cherub. And actually, it's a, it's, a, it's a questionable, difficult, and delicate issue. The Rashi brought down at the end uh, a Pasha, <coughs> at the end of Pasha uh, Yisrael, Rashi brought down that when you make the uh, Kruvim, if you make them ever so slightly in the incorrect way, as a According to how they are uh, required in the in the pesukim and in the teresh of Alpera, we have when you get to those pesukim. If you if you uh, in any way differentiate from the uh, the mitzvah, then you've already made a vedazara one in the club. Even in the actual material, it's written that if you make them out of kesef instead of zahav, then the Abishta says that they will be like idols in front of of me. They bring Rashi to a well, that's a big discussion in its own right. What we would have gone into, but we can't do it now because of the, uh, the shortage of time. However, to say we see the tremendous delicacy of making these kruvim, that if you were mashana from one, in, you made them perfectly, but you made them in the wrong metal, then all, all they're considered to be uh, like a inifanaveda zara, one in what the Fizek Kunto is, that it's a tremendously delicate issue putting these things in the Kedusha Kadoshim, and they can only be exactly the way the Avish has said, otherwise, in the most terrible and mind boggling way, there could be Hakavona. And if I ask the Shaila, what on earth are these two cherubs? What are they doing? What is their purpose and what is their what is their Indian that they come to represent? So Arashi comes along. Arashi says that the word kruv <coughs> is from a word in, in, in Aramic, ravia. Yeah, what ravia means a, a child. And then Arashi says that the word kruv is built from like a comparison. Yeah, kuravia, like a child. Or like a tinok. Uh, a tinok meaning a, a young child. Edifa says Rashi that they were uh, their appearance and the way that they were made, they were made with the faces of tinoki, young children or just very young growing children. The voice of the is interesting that Dafke, they had to be like the faces of, uh, of children, and that's the word, so it comes out of his there that the word kruv is really based on a, on a, 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 a comparison uh, cough at the beginning of the word to another word. In other words, there's another word, rabia, which is really an Aramic term, meaning a child. Ki rabia makes the word kruv. And if I heard the Ibn Ezra comes along and he asks Kashis on Rashi Mikoyev there, and he wants to say that L- 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 
we find that the use of the word kruv in other places indicates that it's a word all in its own right. It's not just a word which is comparing something to something else, but it's an etzim shem in its own right, not like a word that's got an etzim shem, but it's got a comparison cough at the, at the beginning. As any time at the uh, Benezra. And if, uh, he says that the word kruv is the name for certain um, angels and that they uh, look, they have a face like men. They have a sort of a man-looking face, but love to Afkia Tinoi. However, he does admit that uh, there's a certain drushes in the Gemara which don't tend to back up his uh, opinion. And the opinion of the Gemara in the sector Sukkah, right near the beginning, and in the sector Chagiga, about the middle of the Masechta, uh, the, uh, the Gemara says that in Enoch and Ami, their face with Titus that the word Kruv is Takir Kiravia, like a child. And it mentions the Gemara that, uh, that Yecheskel, when he saw the the highest of the Merkava is one on, uh, we bring down on Shwiz, in the Haftarah, the famous vision of Yechesko, the Hanovi of the Merkava, that he also saw these uh, angels and, uh, in the Abba Chayas of Merkava, and uh, one of them was called Pnei Shur, like the face of a, of an ox. <laughs> like the face of an ox. And so the, uh, the Gemara Masekhti Chagika says a fascinating thing. That that's the way it is right from the beginning of creation that the Abba Chayas of Merkava, one of them was a Pnei Shoya. Came along the and he said, Rabbeinu Shalalem, how can you have a, a Shoya in your Chayas of Merkava? The Shoya will remind anybody who happens to get that Chayas to see your Merkava, will remind that there's such a thing as an eagle in the world. And the eagle will remind everybody of the Chayt eagle because the eagle is a young Shoya. So therefore, Yechesku begged Rachamim from the Abish that he would change. <laughs> he would change one of the angels in his uh, Merkava, El Yaina, and he would order from a shore yeah, to, a, to a crew. They don't think about that. And if I later on, when, when, when Yechesku repeats again in a later piece, yeah, where he saw the the Chayas Merkava, he mentions not the Pnei Shur, and instead of the Pnei Shur, he mentions Pnei Kruv. The Gemara says, Adam and a Kruv have got the same shape, because we just what we just said. A Kruv is a small Adam and a Adam is a normal sized Adam. The normal man's got a bigger face and a Kruv has a, a smaller face. Well, if he's a contest, the, uh, the Gemara apparently holds clearly that the Kruvim, their faces were like young boys, how do you call it, young children, Al-Khapanim, but even children, I feel in the age of a Tinai. So I says, oh, to Shiloh, what are these two the children like? And that's what the word cherubs yeah, in English probably also means a cherub means like a young looking face or a young looking angel, what are they doing in the Kedush HaKadoshim on the Kapoidus covering the Orana HaKadosh, well that's the Torah and Befrat that Lafi the Ramban, that's one of the Shittas Ramban, that the whole Mishkan and later the Mikdash were all built only for the sake of the Oran HaKadosh, BMS the whole, the Mishkan was like a special place in which to keep the Oran HaKadosh and that the whole Ike the Mishkan was the Gilei Atoiro Alidei, the Inyan from the Kedush HaKadoshim, bearing in itself the Oran HaKadosh. And it's well known, the Rebbe in the famous Sikhi, Chelik Yud Beis, the Rebbe has got the, 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 the famous difference in that regard between the Ramban and the Ram, and the Ramban, that the Ramban says that the Ike building of the Mishkan and the Beis Amitis was to Lahakri Boi Kobane. It was a pious and the Ramban says that the Ike of it was in order there should be the Gile of the Torah and that the Torah should be exactly it was given at the 
Sinai, so that the Mishkin was like a, 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 a eternalization, or then I say that, uh, to make eternal the, gilly, uh, uh, the giving of the Torah on Mount Sinai. So when he saw the Mishkin or the Migdash, he would see like the, the, the famous uh, uh, Mahmud of Mount uh, Torah, and the union of the Korbanis was only to yeah, cause a certain Kedusha and a certain the arousal of Matalamayla when it get to that Kedusha Ali Dei Diorim. That's the Ramban. However, the Ram also was Bi'ika, the Ika, you know, and the Torah was only to help as it were, Kavriyoho, the Korbanis as it were. Of the Ike, it's a well-known difference of opinion. However, according to the Ramban, the whole union of the Gansa Mishkan is the Torah. And here we have the Oren containing the Torah with these two, as it were, cherubs, Lamaila, Miksha, Ala Oren. The intelligent reader yeah, becomes full of wonder, what are they? What are they doing to? Comes along the Rambam uh, in his famous work, the Meir and Nevuchim. That's what going on. The Rambam dealt with these sort of questions in his great book, the Meir and Nevuchim. And the Rambam says a clown is brought down by the Rabbeinu Bechayim mentions it very Bekita in his Pirush and the, and the Rambam says that uh, Yiddishkeit demands of us that we believe Aleph in the Etzim Metzius of the Abishta, but we're also required to believe that there are such things as Malachim. And the Rambam says that that's a, a second basic principle in Yiddishkeit that you have to believe he's quite able to support himself without uh, you helping him. Yeah, but the, the, the whole Indian at the, uh, at the belief in Malachim, says the Rambam, in angels, spiritual beings, which are called angels, is a Ika in Yiddishkeit. And what does the Abish to need angels for? Yeah, he needs them in order to bring down the Indian from Navua to Bnei Adam. And Navua is a Ika God in Yiddishkeit, as the Rambam writes in the Hildas Yisraeli HaToyra. That the Navua is one of the basic beliefs in Yiddishkeit that you believe Shaha Kale is Borach Menabe Espanay Adam. He gives Navua into the minds and the speech of men. So, how does he do that? He does it through the union of angels, says the Rambam. And therefore, we notice that Yeshaya Novi and others, and Yechesko Novi Bavadai, they experienced the union of, of cherubs, of Kruvim, who came to them and brought them certain messages for Chule Vuchule. In other words, says the Rambam, that the two Kruvim on the union of the Kapoiras, or they indicate a second level in our belief in supreme beings, that the first belief is in the Rebishta, or Neche Abayel Akelcha, Asher Yitzhei Sicha Merav Mitzrayim, the Tzvayta belief, which is equally important is to believe that there's such a thing as spiritual beings under the complete guidance of the Ebishta and they provide an eco basis for the Gansa Torah because Moshe Rabbeinu was a Novi. The only difference is that Moshe Rabbeinu is called the Adoin Kol Anavim. He's the, the Lord and the Master of all the Navir. And he's his Navur, the Ika Kol Ikrim Shabbat Navur. Like the Rambam is married. All the differences between the Vuas Moshe Rabbeinu and the other Navir. Yeah, to, to, to great praise and great laudation of the Navur Moshe Rabbeinu without going into all the detail. However, suffice it to say that Moshe was also a Novi. And that's how it is that messages from the Abishta reach us directly. They reach us through the Indian of the Mahim who feed almost, you might say, the Navir. And if there had to be as it were, a gilui, al in an hatoira, but that was in an anavim, being becabled from malachim. And therefore the cherubs of indicatory of the koyach of the malachim, what they literally feed, as it were, into the in hatoira. As they state, and as they saw the, the, the ramba. But they said to our pele, and if I, the Kruvim, a part of the whole union of the Torah, in order to indicate that great cloud that you have to believe in Malachim. And come to us from the Rambam that it's Goraika in the Munas Yisrael. And the five years 
say you believe in the Avers, you don't believe in anything else, you don't believe in all this Malachim business and the whole thing, then Cholila, that Kufi, is a form of disbelief, a form of Minut, of one in Islam. I think it comes from the, from the Ramba. Comes again the Herak Williams, the, uh, the Rabbeinu Bechaye, and he's married in, in, in that Indian, and he develops on it uh, somewhat, and therefore he said we find a very amazing statement in the Gemara that a Malach, yeah, Bishli Shalelam Oime, that's the Gemara Masek the Chagiga, that a Malach stands literally in the, a third size of the whole world. So there's two ways you can touch that. You can say that a malach is to be found in that area, which is a shlish of the whole universe, the whole creation. Or you can say that one malach is a third of the whole world. In other words, he's so great that he's like a third of the whole. He's like a third of the whole world. And if Aksidus brings down a second opinion, that a malach b'shlish ha'elam eimeid means that a malach takes up literally a third of the whole, he's a, he can be an amazingly immense creature according to our understanding of sight. However, the Nakuda is that he's a, 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 a being, so the Rambam, without body, doesn't have a, a body. And it's well known that the Rambam doesn't quite agree with that in Pasha Vallejo, uh, the Ramban Tainas, uh, they, uh, they do have bodies, the Malachim, but they only have bodies made out of two Yesedes. The, the we men down here, we have bodies from four Yesedes. Out of Yesedes, and then they include the Indian from Mayim and Afila Ophel. Afila Das, Bukhulu, and on the contrary, the Ike by the Adam is that by each out of Ayalokim as Adam, Ophel, Minara, Adama. Just the dust. You know, it is a piece of dust. So you might say, well, what am I picking on him for? We're all the same. So I'll tell you, there's a miser with the, 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 the son of the Mesvichimagi, the Rabbi of Roma, Hamala. But he was the author of his Chavrusa, the Vaisara. And he was called Rabbi of Roma, Hamala. But in, in Ruslan, by the, 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 the Chabad city, in the old days, he used to be called Rabbi Avram HaKodesh. The Rabbi Avram HaMalach is really from Polish city. It's really a, 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 a Polish uh, uh, tradition of uh, the, the original Chabad term for the Rabbi Avram Ben HaMalach was the Rabbi Avram HaKodesh. I say for like many more. Well, say Kanamachim. Uh, to be marking the difference between the two phrases of uh, Hamev and Yovin. But anyway, come to Israel once, he, Rabbi Avram Amalek, uh, he was invited by his father-in-law to a, a place where he wasn't used to, to going, and he came into the shul on Arab Shabbos, and of course all the people were waiting for him to come. They'd heard this great, great amazing Torah personality is coming, they're going to meet him, and they're going to see him, and they're going to do it. And so he came into the shul, and um, he walked over, there was a window in the shul, like all shuls are supposed to windows, and he looked out the window at this big mountain that was, went up, uh, you know, onto a high uh, r- rising, not far from the actual shul, the mountain started to go up. And he stood at the, he stood at the window and he watched out of the mountain the whole time. So all the people got around, they're trying to give him Shalom Aleichem, and they're trying to, you know, to, to, to ask him something, to have him say something. It was already late, Friday afternoon, and he's just standing there looking out the window as if nobody is there. And so in the end, the governor says, you know what, maybe we should give him to dub nuts a big COVID, you know, by the, the, by the Pashtian. You give somebody to dub by the Omerd, and he shows what he can do. Chazon and some other things, that we'll give him to dub by the, uh, the Omerd. Oh, but they couldn't get at him, you know. <laughs> He's standing looking out the window. I've got you. So, you know, they're looking at their watches. It's getting late. So in the end, after a lot of uh, bushes, you know, to, the guy had to send somebody else to the omelet. And here he is there, standing there. When he hears somebody went to the omelet, he put on a cartel and he, he started to dub with everybody together, you know, without any great uh, show, without any great, you know, uh, studium. And the father-in-law is standing at the side, and he's going all colors of the rainbow, you know, from, from embarrassment that his uh, famous son-in-law turned him on such a... 
So in the end, the Gavai went out to him and he said, Listen, man, we wanted to give you such a COVID. We wanted to be with you. We wanted to hear from you. The Vitoira, all you do is stand and look at the, at the mount. She said, Yo, that's in effect what I'm doing. I'm looking at the mount. So he said, What do you see in that mount? Oh, he said, What do I see? He see the mountain is a stick erd. It's just a hunk of dirt, the mountain. It's just a hunk of ground. And look how it pushes itself up in the height and holds from itself. <laughs> it sticked the roof in the Himmler. Had it was sticking up into the, into the heavens. And what is it? Just a piece of earth. Ah, you guys. It's like talking to the wall. So he said the same thing. Here he says, I'm just a piece of earth. I walked into the show and all you guys want to make a mountain out of me. So he said, I thought the best thing was to just stare at the mountain and you would cut, you would cut the remnant. But I see that you didn't. At Khan, Diri, Rebbe Avram, Amalad, Rad Khan, Diri, Asipu. So now we go further. So he was called Rebbe Avram, Amalad. That's the question of what we're talking about. So anyway, Jajaj says, the Rabbeinu Bechaye, the Ramalad is Bishlisha Elam, yeah, he takes up a whole shlisha uh, oilam, and the Farah, we find a very fascinating in it's brought down in the Gemara Mitzik the Sukkah over there, and also mentioned in other places that uh, uh, the um, height of the Kedush Hakadoshim was uh, so many amas, ten amas, <coughs> and the height of the of the Orin, including the Kruvim, was uh, twenty twachim. Ten Amas is sixty twachim, which means that the uh, uh, the head of the Kruvim was up to one shlish yeah, of the whole Arn Koyin. Now in the Beis Amikdash, which Shlomo built, it was different, the Kruvim. And maybe we might mention it, if we had, would have had time, we would have mentioned it. But everybody says, well, you've got no time because you're, you're carrying on and you said you were going to finish early, etc. Mm -hmm. And if I, we have to say, but however... The um, uh, the Melch Shlomoi, he built the Kruvim differently. You're probably familiar. His Kruvim had their feet on the ground. And they were they, they stood over the Oren and their wings uh, sort of covered uh, over the Oren itself. Although they weren't from the Kapoiras. They had their feet on the ground alongside the, uh, the Oren. And so that was how it was in the basement. But also, if you take carefully the measurements, then you can see that they were uh, 10 uh, amas high and the whole Aaron Akuj was 30 amas in the height. So that once again means that they were one shlish of the exact shlish of the height of the Kedush HaKadoshim in the base of Mikdash HaRichay. What Lefizeh couldn't because in the base of Mikdash HaShenei there wasn't an Aaron. Well Lefizeh, we see a, th a, a third. So the Rabbeinu Bechayi says that that backs the Rambam, that the whole Indian of the Oren included in itself, essentially, in Yonim Shom Malachim, to show you that a, a Malach, yeah, even one of them is Bishli Shoelam. We tell you, Kamehameh Reyes, that he brings to back the Rambam, that the uh, Indian Benegat to the Malach. And the essential Amuna in Yonim Malachim, connected with the Indian for Nebuah, or Bamele connected with the Indian Atoyer. Kuntz again the Sopono, the Rabbeinu of Adya Sopono, and he says the most amazing uh, Yesod. Emes, the Kapoiras, and uh, particularly the Kruvim, are indicatory of Malachim. He said, however, what the Malachim have to do with the Kapoiras ala Orin? He said that the Rambam teaches us in Hilkha, you say the Hatoir, like we just mentioned, that the Malachim really don't have a body. Oh, the Ram, oh, oh, that's how we got onto the whole thing. Yeah, the, the Ramban times that they do. Oh my God. Such an amazing clip of this whole thing. It's just mummies. I don't know why they do the same every year, the same unbelievable. It's just unbelievable, crazy, ruining the children, just ruining them with mischief guys. Nobody does anything about it. There's a bad here on the choir, there's Rabonium. Every year the whole Haiti Shadow we have to put up with it. I just can't figure what they're up to, these people. Al Khopanim, Zok Ramban, that they 
do have bodies, but they're made out of the two spiritual um, Yisidis. In other words, they're made out of Eishba Ruach. And Eish in its higher Madrigas is also a very, very spiritual indicator. Which means that for our purposes, they don't have a body. Amiti Zain and they do, according to the Rambam. Although the Rambam holds that the difference between one Malach and another is not a bodily difference, but it's a difference in their service of the Abish or what is their actual task as Molochim, and that's how they differ one from the other. But the Rambam calls them, and he, with that he echoes the expression of many of the great early commentators, and he calls them Sikliim Nibdolim. And they call it separated seichels. Sikhlim nivdolim. In other words, what differs and what separates between is nothing really. Each one is like a, a floating seichel. It's like a, a seichel uh, uh, drifting around in the air. And each one has a different form of understanding, and that's what separates them. I don't want to describe as having wings and other in Yonim. He said that's only the shakhik, that's the reason that we should be able to have them. He said the emphasis is that they're called sickly in the Torah. So the Sopono, why is it that the Malachim are sickly in the Torah? So he said that comes to teach us that if you really want to have Seiko, then you've got to be Nivdal. You've got to be, as it were, separate. In other words, you've got to try and be like the Malachim. Ain Neshom is a much higher than the Malachim. But you've got to try and be like Malachim for wish, because otherwise your Seiko will already, always be mixed with your body. And your Seiko and your body will actually wear how to call it mixed together. And all you'll have is what's called potential Seiko. But you'll never really have real active Seiko, because it'll always be functioning according to certain demands or dictatorships or other things of the Gufagash. That is up to support. <laughs> so therefore, he said, the only way to really use your seiko is to become nimda. You've got to get out of the seiko. You've got to get out of the body rather and leave the goof behind. <laughs> that is up to support. And that's how you come to it. You're going to be talking about You can't talk with some of these guys around here. You know, the next thing is you don't know what's likely to happen. You know, have people who have the going up on the mountain rather than looking at the mountain. <laughs> but anyway, suffice it to say that the Soprano says that the, the Kruvim were an indication and a, a teaching of us that the Malachim are to a certain extent a goal. And that's why they're on top of the Kapoidas. If you really want to be shy to Torah, which is inside the Kapoidas, then you've got to be like these Malachim that you've got to be as it were, out of the goof. You've got to be, not, a, not have a goof, you've got to be a seichon nim dal. And he said that means that you've got to forget about kumriyas and, and gashmiyas with all the inyanim, and you've got to write it all off, and you've just got to go up and be shy to inyanim uchniyim, and that should be the, uh, the imms uh, life of the Adam. And then he becomes deimulama, well, that's what we find that there's certain statements in the Gemara and other places which indicate that it's a mile to be like the Malachim. Even though we know that the Shamas are really higher than Malachim, but it's a mile to be like a Malach. The fact we find that it's written about Rabbi Yehuda by Eloi, the Gemara says in the sect of Shabbos, in Perim Bamea Matlikin, that area of Shabbos. He used to, uh, just before, you know, Lichten was before they had some Knesset Sashabas, he used to put on a, a, a talis and a white beard and a whole thing, and he used to sit down in a special chair that they prepared him like a throne. And he was Dema to a, an angel of the Avista. My my was there. He's the Indian age was there. So the Gemara tells us that if you want to learn from a Rav, the Gemara says, Masek te Chagiga, if you want to learn from a Rav, then you have to be Medaktik, and you should be Daim al Malach Hashem Tzvokai. Then you can learn from him. So I saw the Shiloh was, well, that was it a Malach from a Malach. And if I come to get into Tzvokai, and he gives that basic Indian, he teaches us that, 
that the real way to proper understanding and to say who beshlemers are moving is to get out of the in only hachumni years for hachashmi years and don't mix them in with your seichel, put it all aside and be ruchniyistic. Had to go for the higher in yonim, and Hashem will help you make it, and you you really get beyond all the limitations. It's an amazing thing. I don't disappoint him. And after that, he goes on to talk about other details that we find in them. That that was the uh, that that's a Indian assets of the Shaila to say where does mitzvahs come in? I mean, we see that it's not just learning Torah the whole of life and not, or the whole of Yiddishkeit is in a way not the Ike learning Torah ultimately would appear that we've got to keep the mitzvahs you know even maybe in a more Ike Dika fashion so it's a support on an amazing thing and it appears that he's building a whole shita uh, saying the Ike is ultimately to come to complete and utter withdrawal from the oil of our physical to appreciate the course in order to make that going out of your physicality, you have to do the mitzvahs. If the mitzvahs elevate us. They're like shluchim from Hashem to elevate us and carry us out of the physicality and the gashmiyas. And through keeping mitzvahs, you can come to that understanding. What well, Rafisa would come out, a chiddish nifla in the support, a chiddish pele, that he's saying that the mitzvahs are like a medium. They're like a way to get to something elevate yourself to an ultimate shlemus, like it'll be in Elam according to the shit of the mitzvahs potatoes after Tchir Samais. Or in how it is in Elam Erdian, well there they don't have mitzvahs per poil, they just have the etzim mini for dvekas and elikus, mitzad limudah, mitzad limudah toil. Kunch again, the Radak, what he in the Echesko, where the Radak talks about the Kruvim over there, and the Radak says a slightly different idea. He says, I know that the Kruvim teaches the mile of angels, but we're given mitzvahs in order that the mitzvahs should help us yeah, to carry out the ultimate tachlis. And why do you have to know a tremendous amount about Elokus, and you have to be like the Molochim to know all about the Abishta, is only that your mitzvahs should be more perfect and more and I mean, the difference between the Radak and the, and the Soporno is that the Soporno holds that the mitzvahs are like a, a means and a, 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 what do you call it, a, a medium to bring us to unbelievable greatness and knowledge of Elokus and that's the ultimate which you might call aim. The heel of the Radak says no, the ultimate aim is to keep the mitzvahs. The ultimate aim is to carry out Hashem's will, the ever pashtas, in the etzim kiyam of the mitzvahs, to be like a malach with all that knowledge and to go like the kruvim in a way that you're yearning upwards, or that helps you to keep the mitzvahs, but it's lame. It's, you know, it's like two in Yonim going in different directions based on the same basic idea. Well, it's a fascinating dogma of how one basic idea can be applied in different way fun. Oh, Kapani, the visa come to is that there's a mile in the in the Kruvim that they show us the way to gain the ultimate message and perfection of the Torah hidden inside the Kapani. The Ish Bizod have a Pratima when can I mock him? It's not the time now and the place to go into the whole world. Suffice it to say that everybody basically agrees that they look like children, that they had the faces of children. Now the truth of the matter is that there's another whole picture of the Kruvim in the Gemara in the sector Yuma, but there it would appear a slightly different view of the Kruvim, uh, but I can't go into that now, and also for certain reasons I wouldn't have probably been Marich Bezer anyway. But suffice it to say, we'll take the Shitta that they are, yeah, how do you call it, children, or they look like children, what is the union uh, bezer? This will help us to understand a very basic message of the of the Rebbe Melech Mashiach. Come to gain the shach al I'm only saying this by memory because I asked somebody to get me the safer, and he came back empty. He came back empty-handed. And so um, he's likely to be fired because of that. But what can we do? It's, um, uh, uh, suffice it to say. If, if, if I ask for a saver, I've got to get it. But anyway, no doubt, you know, if 
somehow or another we'll be able to be moichle. Anyway, what I remember from what's written in the in the shach, he says first of all the baratulim says that it's like two. Uh, he doesn't say bocherei yeshiva, but he says two talmidim. Yeah, the, how do they learn? They learn pnei ishalochim. They sit and they learn with their faces. Yeah, one to the other, and, the, and that's the union from Limud Bechabrusa. What the Mission Pirchi always tells us that's one of the 48 ways that you gain greatness in the Torah is to, to true knowledge of the Torah is to learn Bechabrusa. I wire their faces slightly down, then we can suggest you've got to keep your nose in the gun. Gemara, haven't you? Uh, not to be here looking around all over the place and schmoozing and, and going out onto the, the balcony and looking at the scenery of Quachabad, etc. etc. Et well, that would be good if that's all you were doing. It's, remember, you got to have your nose in the Gemara, but you got to be Pnei Ish El Bachiv. you got to be facing one or the other. Come to again the Shachal HaTayra B'Tayshefes Biyo, and he says the union of two Kruvim, or the union of two uh, children, and it's also brought down by Rikas in another sefer called the, um, what's his name? I always forget the name of that sefer. But anyway, it's also brought down in his sefer, Barichas, that uh, the Orin, being the basis of the Mishkon, according to the Ramban, <coughs> contains the Torah, and the Torah in Yoni is that you have to learn it for Shlemus. You've got to learn it Yom Momba, Ayla, meaning that you have nothing else to do but learn Torah. You, you give an over to learning Torah, and that would be the, the most perfect way that we can imagine that somebody's devoted himself to Torah. So they both say that who are the people, who are the creative beings that can actually do that and apart from the fact that they have to play a little bit and they have to maybe have their lunch and they have to have this and they have to have that, of a Tanuika show base Rabon, the small children that they learn, yeah, by their, their, their Rav, in the Cheder they are the perfection of Limadatur, because they have nothing else to do that's the whole meaning in life, is only there they're learning. Ain't them shum asik in life, cloud, except maybe to play around a bit of it. That's only in order to freshen them up that they should be able to go further with their learning. In the fact, the infant Tanaka shall be srabon, the is the highest madrega in Limadatera. And they have a perfection in their limud that nobody else can possibly reach. Because it's written that once a minute, the author brings it in, uh, in the Hilkes Talmud Taylor. That once a minute has grown up and he's, been, uh, he's, be, he's become married, then oil ha panosav, oil ha kasofim al tzavoro. There's like a, a yoke around his neck of having to provide for his family. No matter who he is, he always bury a, a yoke. So he might give, live from a koilo or he might live from a community. Oh, but he's still worried. How's he going to use that money and how's he going to spread it out over the, the different needs of the household for Khuliva? Okay. Uh, but a child in, in uh, Tanaka shall be and They don't have any of those in Yoni. And if I, says the Shachal uh, Abtur of Oid, great Mephoshim, that they, as it were, they stand on the, on the orange to show that you must never lose the naivety in your learning of the Tanaka show, show Beshrabo. And, and furthermore, the Gemara in Masekta Shavui tells us that you're not allowed to be Mavatil, uh, the Tanaka show Beshrabo, from the learning for anything in the world, even for Binyan Beshamikdosh. When everybody is busy building the Beshamikdosh, you're not allowed to take the children out of their cheder and get them to help with building his base on it. In other words, under in no circumstances are you allowed to be mavatal children from their learning. But at Kedikah, yeah, they say that all the gazelles and all the improper inyonim that could happen, chas v'sholem, to yidden, all of them become mispatil and become, uh, how do you call it, uh, de, how do you call it, de, decreed or deferred, how do you call it, alidei, the limit of the Tanakh Shobesh Rabbah. 
And the first brought down a person can tell him right near the beginning, and it's written there yeah, that uh, the children, their Indian, you started to oise on the mouths of the small children you have made the strong the the, the koyak of the Jews of the Jewish people to wipe out literally the enemy and the avenger you are looking for for vengeance or one in plan and that's the way you wiped them out the day the limit show base it's Robert something you can't help it's just, it's, it's a I mean, you got that aimless as should take it only it will come from from the lead and if I tonight it shall be Srabon are the quick of what you might call the ability of Yidden to fight the most terrible uh, things even Oyevu Misnake and if I you know the famous story about the Friedrich Rebbe uh, what led uh, directly to his arrest and to the freedom on you based Thomas is brought down by the Rebbe Melech Mashiach on many occasions because he gave himself over to duck his small children and the and the and the, the great chassidim that were taken and were put into prison or even shot with money and plan were executed by the by the the communist regime and that was because of the teaching of the law the small children in the hidden chadorim, etc., et, et, because they knew that if, like the, uh, it's put down a Russian in a madras, im ain gedoyim ain tayoshim. If not little small goats, so there's not big one. In other words, if you're going to have big from a hidden, that's difficult to fight them. But the best way to fight them is to stop them ever becoming that like that. That you go to the gedoyim and you rid yourself of the gedoyim. Of the little ones, and if I, the Friedrich Rebbe, he said that famous mimer with the Atu Tzavi that you guys are learning from the Rebbe is based on that mimer, the famous mimer that the Rebbe said in Tov Reish Pesayim, shortly before he was arrested, he went into the to the to the shul in Moscow, and they said to him, listen, don't say anything because it's terrible. We don't the spies and agents are hidden in this crowd that are in the shul. And nonetheless, the Rebbe spoke out a whole mimer, considered on which is the, the, this other mimer from the Rebbe is based, and the Rebbe says over there a whole arichas about how several oisias in the mimer which deal with you have to have Masil's nefesh to teach the Tinoika shell base, base rabble. And he goes and he urges all the Yidden that are there that they have to be Moise's nefesh for teaching the, the, the small children. At the far, do we see that that's a, a Yisod Musa in the whole union of Yiddishkeit that the Tanakhs and the young children, they have the power to be Mavatul Alein and in Yonim. And therefore, you know the famous story with the Rebbe, Melech HaMoshiach, when there were signs of the Yom Kippur War, they yeah, were approaching. That on the Yud Beis Tamas and Yud Gimel Tamas before the Yom Kippur War actually broke out, the Rebbe all of a sudden said to take all the children from all the Chatorim, the Yidin and, and, and organizers, could possibly arouse to come, come with all the, all the Rebavish Chatorim, a lot of other Chatorim joined in, and thousands and thousands of Tineke Shel Beis Rabon went to the Kaisal. You don't know the famous story. Nobody knows about it, but it's Aika Shibi Ikre. And the Rebbe spoke then that whole in and he said the Tapti the Tanaka shall be Srabban and nobody understood what he was talking about. There was no water was what was going on. You know, what, uh, nobody realized uh, that just a few short months after that would be the terrible uh, 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 unbelievable tragedy that occurred to the Yom Kippur War. And if I, we see that whenever it was necessary to be Mavatl in Yon and Misugze, Daki the Tanoi Kui shall be the young children, <clears throat> and until there's a, a famous Remus which brought down in Sforim, that there's a Pasuk in Mishle which says that Sofo Rako Tishaber Gorem, that a, 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 how do you call it, a, a, a soft statement from softly speaking lips can break a hard bone. Tishaber Gorem, a Gorem means a hard bone. So they say that Tishaber, if you, if, you, if you look at the word Tishaber, that's the Rosh Yatevus of Tanoiko Shel Beis Rabon. And uh, uh, Gorem yeah, is Gezeros Rois Mivatlim. 
the day of the today's of base rabbim, day of the battle, the gazelle is right. And it's not it's down. It's brought down by very early commentators, but that was our Makubu Dika Rosha Tevas, it was known to the Gedele Israel. And look at what the Rebbe said. Every time there was a big threat, the Rebbe said, you must bring the Tanaka Shabbos Rabbah. You must bring the Klein and Kinder. He said, what you always have to do is pre- you have to preserve in yourself you know, that in and of and Pashtas. You have to learn, like it's put, the two, like the Balaturim says, the two Bokrim, the two Yung uh, Gechevra. But they sit one opposite the other, Bechavusa, with their faces in the Kimura, Pneum El Akapoira. And the Fa'a, comes again, not a Peladikaza, which is Mamish Beoisha Ka, Beoisha Hakibun, and that is what we find that it's brought down, uh, uh, Nifla, Bapele in the, in the Zoya Kodesh, and the Alter Rebbe brings it in, in the uh, Pasha Truma, in this week's Pasha Torah, right n- near the beginning, as brought down that the Keruvim three times a day inside the Kodesh Akadoshim, they, they, they used to, how do you call it, flap their wings themselves. In other words, even though their wings were built, you know, they were uh, Alamayla, over they used to, you know, they used to flap their wings, Lava. They used to lift them up and sort of bring them down and go like that. The uh, the, uh, the 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 Kruvim inside the Kodesh Hakadosh. So Zotter Amaz, yeah, the great Makubo, he says the beer over there that was at the three different fillies beyond, and at that Indian of the arousing of the wings of the of the uh, dust, well, that is the Indian of the three fillies, Shachris, Midka, and Amen. and Arvis. What we see, Mise that the Indian of Tfila and Torah are Mamish Makush Zebra that the only emissa aliyah of your Torah and the only way your Torah can be an Elach a Torah is if you're Elach with your davening and you pay attention to your davening and it's a davening and an even from lifting up your wings in other words you want to go higher and you want to be massing in your name yeah, and it's well known that according to Tanya the wings are Av of a year they're having Av of Hashem and Yir of Hashem and if I, that's how you get to a Vedas Atfila I want to go to children's faces, so everybody's not dealt with mitzvah self, a shirish mitzvah satfila. No, is it the Chapman Teddy brings out one of the early chapters, he brings the Rabbi Shimshim Mikunin. Uh, he was one of the Palaites, one of the very early uh, Rishanim, and he says that even though there's a the Enif from the Mechavan in the Esa spirit, and there's a the Enif from being Mechavan in this sphere, in that sphere of the Chulu, he said, oh, but when you come to Davan, you got a Gladas Zehatinoik. Anim is palat. I asked him, how do you daven, Rebbe? And he said, when I daven, he said, I daven according, I make my mind like the mind of a tinoik, like a child. I said, the Rebbe, the Tzom said in a later part of the whole Hebshik over there, he's must be that when it comes to the etzim davening, if you want all the kavanas to be much lehi, he'll be like a child asking its father to help. It has to be with the pshitas of a da zea tinoik. And that the whole of davening has to be in an oven of putting aside all your inyonim and you just have to lay yourself away to the age of Pepshitas, I keep you short uh, and daven like a, yeah, as a young son asking the age of the oven. And those are the inyonim from the da, say, atinoik, and he mispalam. And from the river, Melech Mashiach, there's a whole beer. I can't say beer from the river in uh, Toshi Memhei, in one of the Maimorim, where his mouth was attached to his sword and the whole inyon at fila. But that's the Atin. Alamir, the Lafize, is there good? Why that? Even though it's not written there in the Zaya Kodesh. But Lafize, that's why the Tanakhis have Pnei, ha, a Kruim is Ketinaik, like Rashi old, and that's uh, as if the Gemara, that you, because the whole Indian, for Aveda Satfil, has to be Dafki, Latas, Atinaik. And that's an essential Aliyah in the Torah that you learn. The same kind of Mokhim. Yeah, to write again in all the details of uh, to get to that, uh, the greatness of that Indian, well, I think it's more or less understood if you take uh, those few brief words. And so that's the same Indian, but to get to our belief in the coming of Moshiach, that Ladas Artinik and Imus Power. It doesn't look so easy. You look at the world and you see all the crazy world and then you say, oh, where's Moshiach? Well, how's it going to happen? So you've got to be like those two Kruvim. You've got to be a cherub. Over the audience, you've got to take all your Torah, and then at a certain point, you've got to be, 
yeah, but toughness, uh, if you've got to put yourself aside and not be a, a, a great understander, and you've got to have a moon of shoot to pick the severe uh, uh, akin. And that's why the Rebbe on many occasions has praised yeah, the great power of small children. And he says, because they don't know any, any chokhmah. They raise an ishmael kain chespoina. And if they ask for something, they mean it with a pshit. <laughs> Remember, we've got to ask for Moshiach, Lada Sehatine. Pick the see with the cherub on the orange, they had a crew, Karavia. We have to ask for the Afashas, Rabbeinu Shalalam, Shik Moshiach Titkainu. Can't go on anymore like this. As Muzain the Giula, Mam Mishpapel, Mam Mishpapashta. And therefore, I was very spoil. There's a, uh, an Admur, a Rebbe in Bnei Brak. Well, he's one of those ones, and he was there to visit the Rebbe, and he spoke with the Rebbe. In Yechidah, and uh, I once heard from him. I have to have a conversation. Uh, it was also a privilege to have a conversation with him. And he told me that he, when he was in, the, in Yechidah with the Rebbe, he saw the most unbelievable brain that he'd ever seen in his whole uh, existence and the most unbelievable control of Vinyonim and Torah, Veniglo, Venista he said it was just uh, mind-boggling but he said when you started to talk about Moshiach he said the Rebbe was just like a little simple tinoy he said the Rebbe just said that that's how it is and Moshiach is coming you have to be recovered and you have to believe that when a pshuta the call Yom Shiyove and the call Yom Shiyove means every day you've got to believe that he's going to come he said the Rebbe spoke just like like a young boy. That's what he said. Kako Omari. When he spoke about Moshiach, he spoke like an absolute pshitas, and he said it was amazing how this unbelievable brain was able to talk in such a straightforward and poshita without Chokmah's way. So I said to myself, I don't know my hand, you're sitting here, God, but you're not doing too bad. When I heard that from him, I was very, I was very uh, pleased. And that's the whole thing. So we've got to realize that the Rebbe is the Rebbe of all the, the Rebbe's and those who really had uh, a tremendous understanding like this uh, 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 man did. He saw in the Rebbe that unbelievable dogma of cherubs yeah, that threw him on the, on the Oran HaKadosh. Remember, all we have to do is we have to follow the Rebbe just like a, how do you call it, a cherub. We've got to follow the Rebbe in that way we're going to believe everything he says. We're going to know that it's going to come and it's right here now, Beinenu, and it's going to be and it is and it will be with all inyonim taken from God, Mamish, and that that is the achlis of all of our inyonim in many, many places. And we should be building the base of Midish with the crew him as they'll be in the base of Midish. Ashlishi, Ovein Kenyahi. Let's go.